Welcome to the Waters and Stanton Ham Radio Channel, presented by Peter Waters. Well, hello, and thank you for joining me once again on the Waters and Stanton Video Channel. I've been using the FTX-1 for about a month now, and I'm beginning to appreciate how good the receiver is. Um, the FTX-1 actually comes in two forms. You can have the FTX-1 field, which is basically um, a 10 watt transceiver, and you can plug into the back of that the, um, the amplifier unit uh, or buy it as an Optima, and the Optima includes the amplifier unit, and that gives you 100 watts out on the HF bands, 50 watts on the VHF bands, it's got a built-in antenna matching unit, and it's also got two antenna sockets on the rear, so you can switch antennas. But I've really been impressed with the performance of the receiver section. So whether you have the Field or the Optima, you're going to still benefit from this really superb receiver. So let me explain. About 18 months ago, I reviewed the Yaesu FT710, and I was really impressed with the receiver performance. Listen to what I said. It's a completely new design, and I must say the performance stuck at me. On the receive side, it's very near the top of the Sherwood Engineering ratings. Yes, the FT710 was Yosu's first fully SDR HF transceiver, and it's proved to be an absolute winner. Well, the good news is that the FTX1 uses basically the same receiver concept. Everything below 48 megahertz is fully SDR. Because bear in mind that the FTX1 also adds two meters and 70 sems. But like the FT710, the receiver on the FTX1 is remarkably quiet. How can I explain it? Well, basically, when you switch it on and compare it with some of the older transceivers, it just sounds so much quieter. There's less noise. Let me explain how I think this happens. Quite clearly, the end result is due to the superb uh, engineering um, of uh, Yesu. Uh, back in Japan when they designed both these transceivers and I think they took a big step forward when they introduced the FT710. It didn't uh, didn't sort of uh, come onto the scene with a great uh, clang of bells and whistles etc etc. It just sort of seemed to appear and it was only when I um, got a sample I realised what uh, big strides Yesu had made particularly in the lower end of the market, the, what you might call the budget class. Because uh, the FT710, um, you can buy for around about £850, £880. Pounds. Um, there are offers uh, from time to time, but it's, it's not an expensive transceiver. Now, the FTX1 um, is more expensive because the, it's more complex and, of course, uh, uh, it adds uh, 2 metres and 70 sems and uh, you've got the uh, amplifier that bolts on the back. But it still works extremely well and, and really and truly I cannot tell the difference in the receiver performance between the FT710 and the FTX1 and uh, one or two uh, experienced hams I've spoken to agree that the, the receiver performance is really top notch. So let's take a look at the various options that the engineers had in order to achieve this so-called quiet receiver because it is definitely quiet, it's nice to listen to and it's, it's far less noisy than earlier transceivers going back a few years. I think one of the big steps forward is to have a very good dynamic range. If you have a very good dynamic range, it means to say that you can hear signals way up the scale S9 plus but the signals down the bottom of the band weak signals or a bit of noise that's way down it's way way much way lower than the top end signals in other words the dynamic range is increased and if you increase the dynamic range it means to say that the weaker signals are weaker and the stronger signals are stronger and if you reduce the dynamic range, you, you introduce 
a form of compression. And this has the effect of bringing your local background noise closer to the signal you're listening to. Now, if you uh, have any experience in audio, you will know that in audio compression, um, the, the attempt is to make the quieter sounds a bit louder and hold back the really loud sounds. In other words, you can press it. And in music, that is rather essential because if you get a symphony orchestra and you get somebody playing a triangle or something else that's really soft, you want to hear it. And very often, when the production is finally all, is all sort of recorded and so forth, the, the final engineering will be to put a form of compression on there in order to, to bring the weak signals up a bit and hold the loud signals down a bit to give a nice... Um, is sort of a, a, a nice sound through your speakers. Well, we don't actually want that in ham radio. We want to hear the loud signals and we don't want to hear the weak signals. And the weak signals very often noise. So if you increase the dynamic range at the front end of the receiver, you effectively separate the stronger signals from the weaker signals and the weaker signals very often a noise. Now later on in this video, I'm gonna show how you can make even greater improvements in the apparent receiver performance. But let's, uh, let's keep uh, um, at the front end at the moment. So we know that the dynamic range is very, very good. And we know that that should improve the performance of the receiver, particularly when you're um, comparing sort of signals with noise, signal to noise ratio. But another thing that you can do in, in order to improve the noise or reduce the noise is to have very steep sided filters. Now at the front end of the, uh, the FTX1 and the FT710 they've got what we call bandpass filters because you have to bear in mind that when you connect a, an aerial to a transceiver it's potentially going to receive the whole radio spectrum from the real low frequency signals right up to the high frequency signals. And to some extent, your antenna is going to limit um, the, the frequency range of the signals that appear pretty strong at the front end. But nevertheless, there's an awful lot of signals over a wide frequency range that are going to appear at the front end of your receiver. So the first thing to do is to build in some filters um, in order to reduce the width of the the band or the front end um, in other words reduce the, the number of signals that are going in the front end let's for example say 20 meters so you could have a bandpass filter that's uh, a bit wider than the 20 meter ham radio band and uh, that would effectively effectively block off all signals other than those in the 20 meter ham radio band now i know you're going to say well, what about general coverage well when you go to general coverage on a lot of these transceivers the front end performance is not as good as it is on the hand bands. That's inevitable because what they've done is to try and give the best performance on the hand radio bands. So you've got to filter the front end. That limits the number of signals that the receiver has got to cope with. Now the next filtering is further down the receiver section where they want to actually filter just the signal you're tuned to. And this is really where SDR um, plays quite a major performance because it's much easier to to create steep sided filters in SDR than it is in the more traditional way. So with SDR you're going to have a much sharper filtering system and that in itself is going to reduce noise. And bear in mind that as you bring a filter in, as you make the, the filter narrower, so it reduces noise. Now there comes a point, for example, on SSB, where you don't want it too narrow because it, it, it distort, not distorts, but it, it doesn't give enough audio through for you to decode the signal. But you can actually reduce the bandwidth of your receiver quite successfully uh, by several hundred hertz and reduce the noise without preventing you from listening to the signal. And as we go further down the receiver chain towards the audio side, so the engineers have got the ability to create um, a signal path that is low noise. In other words, they don't want the receiver to introduce any noise whatsoever. So with SDR, we have the ability to create something which we always yearned for in years gone by but we couldn't actually achieve because of limitations. But now with SDR, we've greatly improved the possibility of creating a sort of a near perfect 
uh, signal path. There won't be a perfect signal path, and there is, but it certainly shows up on these two radios, the FT710 and the FTX1. Now, as good as both of these transceivers are for receiving, we can actually make some further improvements by adjusting some of the parameters. And let me just take you through uh, one or two things that you might want to experiment with, which will improve and hopefully reduce the noise level. So let's go through those. Now, the first thing we're going to look at is something called IPO, which is Intercept Point Optimization. That's all to do with the front end, and it's also to do with what we talked about earlier, the dynamic range, because if you have any amplification in the front end, it tends to degrade the dynamic range of the receiver and also introduces some artifacts. So you need to select IPO and make sure IPO is selected rather than either of the two preamplifiers. This will give you a clean front end. Now, the amplifiers you will probably need to use on 12 and 10 meters, and certainly on 4, 2 and 70 cms if you want to increase the sensitivity. But on the HF bands, generally speaking, you shouldn't need that switched in at all. Certainly up to the, well, uh, up to the uh, 20 meter band, um, probably 15 will be okay as well if you've got a decent aerial. If you've got a short aerial, then you may need that amplification. But the golden rule is make sure IPO is selected. That will give you the cleanest front end and the best dynamic range and the lowest noise in the front end of the receiver. The next thing to do is to take a look at the attenuator um, button on the screen or the attenuator menu item on the screen. Generally speaking on 80 meters and 40 meters you probably find that you can actually afford to put that attenuator in. That again will improve the front end performance of your receiver if there's a lot of strong signals because a lot of strong signals can cause problems and degrade the performance of the receiver. So try switching in the attenuator. Don't worry about S meter readings or anything like that. We're just concentrating on getting a clean receiver. So try selecting the attenuator. You may find that that cleans up a lot of the noise that you may be getting in the background, particularly on the lower frequency bands. If you need to increase the sensitivity of the receiver, then of course select uh, or, or deselect the attenuator so that you've got the uh, a clean front end with no attenuation. Do remember you've got an RF gain control. Press that knob in there once, that brings the RF gain control. Back it off occasionally. You don't need it fully clockwise all the time. That will improve things. Now, it's an interesting experiment that you might want to try. And uh, you need to be rather careful here, not because you're going to do any damage, but because um, you don't want sort of loud signals pumping through the speaker. First of all, turn your audio gain down to quite a low level. Then uh, tap the audio gain, the bottom right hand knob on the FTX1, that will select RF gain control. And the RF gain control now we're going to use to actually control the audio level coming through the speaker. Now go to AGC and switch AGC off. If you're listening to a, quite a strong signal, you may find it's distorted. So just back off the RF gain control on the right. Make sure you've selected RF gain control. Back off that RF gain control until the signal is acceptable. That RF gain control you can actually use as an audio uh, control because as you increase the RF gain uh, so the signal becomes louder and as you reduce the RF gain so the signal becomes weaker. Uh, ignore the S meter really because uh, the, the S meter in this situation can be pretty meaningless. But what you may find is you get quite a nice quiet background, um, particularly if you're tuning across the band. Because if you're tuning across the band with the AGC on, as soon as there's no signals, your noise comes up. But if you turn the AGC off, then you'll find that when you're tuning from one signal to another, if there's any gap, the noise level is well down. Okay. 
Bon, bah, il n'y a pas de souci. Euh, merci, euh, Robert. Now you do have to be careful of this, as I say, do make sure that your audio gain is turned well back when you set it up. But spend 10 or 15 minutes or longer uh, trying out no AGC on the receiver. You may be pleasantly surprised at the result you get. Now, if there's a lot of fading, obviously the signal is going to go up and down because you've switched the AGC off. But very often I've found that it's quite a pleasant experience. And that's the way we used to operate receivers many years ago, when the AGC really didn't work very well with SSB. So give it a, give it a try. It's quite an interesting experiment, and you may well find that uh, it's quite a pleasant receiving experience. Now there's quite a few other things that we can do with the FTX1, which I'll come back to in a later video. But try the uh, experiments that I've just described. Try to optimize your receiver by switching off the, um, uh, the preamp, by switching in IPO. And don't be frightened of switching the attenuator, because the attenuator very often will improve things. But I'll say I'll come back to other things that you can do with the FTX1 in a later video. In summary, the FTX1 is a superb transceiver. The receiver section is absolutely amazing, and it's um, it's really cutting edge stuff. If you're looking for a quiet receiver, then the FTX1 or the FT710 um, will give you a very good listening experience. So in the meantime, thank you for the support on this channel. It's much appreciated. Don't forget to press the subscribe button. And I'll look forward to seeing you, as usual, in the next video. Bye for now.